There's very little money left in the country. Millions of rupees were transferred to West Pakistan last year. And in the last two days of the war, the Pakistani army broke into the state banks and burned about five million pounds worth of paper currency. Industry is at a halt. Paraffin needed for cooking and heating is very scarce and huge queues form for any supply that becomes available. Communications have been heavily disrupted. A third of the people are unemployed and most others underemployed. All this the Sheikh will learn as his advisers chronicle the events of the past 10 months he's spent in detention. But the Sheikh will know too that his new country has the potential to overcome its problems. Nine out of every ten people live away from the towns and eight out of every ten earn their living from agriculture. But the nation still can't feed itself. For Bangladesh, with its 75 million people, has one of the world's highest population densities. Formerly it imported a million tons of food a year, mostly from West Pakistan. In the short term, now it will have to look to India and the Eastern Bloc to provide it. In the long term, farming will have to be modernized and mechanized and trade packs being negotiated with Poland and Bulgaria do provide for the supply of farm machinery and fertilizers. It's fair to say that at present the food shortage is not as critical as many had feared, but the impact of the refugees returning from India may alter the situation. Five major river systems ribbon their way through the country, rivers rich in fish. At present the fishing is rudimentary, but if this industry can also be modernized, it has a ready market in neighboring West Bengal where supplies of fresh fish sell for three times their price in Bangladesh. The rivers too could power extensive hydroelectric systems and do away with the country's need to import coal to power the factories. There's a plentiful supply of timber, a rich potential for paper and pulp mills. But it's jute on which for so long the economy of the country has been built. Most of the mills, like this one at Demra near Dhaka, were owned by West Pakistanis. Now they've been nationalized, and it's hoped to be able to reopen some and ease the unemployment situation in the next few weeks. This mill is due to open next month, but with a labor force reduced from the 9,000 when in full production to only 3,000. There is raw material in stock, but last year's crop, like the tea crop, was largely neglected. And as the months go by, jute is losing more and more ground to synthetic fibers. Recapturing the markets will not be easy. Ironically, in a country of chronic unemployment, there is a labor shortage, but it's a shortage of skilled labor. Many thousands of skilled workers are still serving in the Muktibahini guerrillas on peacekeeping missions. Many thousands of others lost their lives. But despite this, the nation's richest potential still lies in its people. They've shown the will to win the struggle for survival and the fight for independence. Given strong leadership, few can doubt that they also have the will to win the economic battle. Robert Southgate, News at 10, Dakar.